Good morning, world. It's Paul Whittakin returning to you today with the Universal Law of Numbers. And I hope you enjoyed this edition. Uh, I think I'm going to enjoy bringing it to you. So just bear with me. I think some of you have already realized that I'm a very simple person. Uh, I don't have anything fancy going on uh, with my videography or anything like that. Uh, I like to keep it real. I don't want to be scripted. I think if I have anything worth saying, then I should be able to uh, communicate it to you. Uh, I'm trying to communicate some very uh, profound thoughts, I believe, and I'm just doing the best I can. And I hope that you can get something from this. So I'm going to take this down for a second and just put it over here. And I'm going to uh, address pi today. Pi is a very special number. I think we all agree about that. So uh, the understanding about pi is it has this infinite sequence of numbers. And they don't seem to appear to follow any sequence in particular, et cetera, et cetera. And people compute them out to millions, I don't know, a million uh, digits after the decimal and uh, try and make some sense out of it. Now me, I'm a much more simple person than that and I'm not at all a mathematician and I don't claim to be, but I uh, just like to look at the big picture and try and make sense out of it and I'm pretty good at that, uh, but I'm not very good at little things uh, as a matter of fact, probably when I stand up, I'm going to trip over myself and uh, spill my coffee, okay? But, but that's besides the point. Uh, my message is more powerful than that, and uh, I hope you can bear with me a little bit, and I will try and communicate that to you today. So what we have with Pi, now, no sequence or whatever, I don't believe that's the case because I'm just looking at the first numbers of Pi, the first nine numbers to be specific, and I see that it starts with a three. Okay, so uh, if pi is associated with the circle, well, we're going to have to come up with the 369 code because the circle is the 369 code. But the circle is 2 pi, and we're going to get to that in a second. But anyway, my first observation is it starts with a three, then we have a six if we put the four with the two ones together followed by a 5, and then comes a 9. So there's a 3, a 6, and a 9, and they're, they're separated by those intervals. And that's just the way it is, okay? However, we have a couple of other uh, clues, because if we uh, add up the first nine numbers of pi, we're going to come up with the 36, and the 36 is obviously the 9. So we have the 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 3, 6, and the 9 there as well. I mean, we can even look at it here. 3, 9, 6. That's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a 9, 1, 2, it's a 6. 2 and a 4 is a 6. It is what it is, and uh, it will always be that, and uh, nothing else, okay? So, um, that's going to introduce us to today's lesson. And now we're going to just bring out the 2 pi, and we're going to start to make sense out of that. Because when we add the 3.14 together, plus any number of digits, it doesn't matter. You know, you could use the million digits if you like. But if you uh, add the 3.14 to the 3.14, or in other words, multiply it by 2, you're going to come up with the 628. Now, now we have the circle. And now it doesn't seem so complicated uh, at all anymore. But uh, it is, how complicated is it? It's incomprehensibly complicated. How simple is it? It's beautifully simple. So that's what makes uh, the number pi so special. So we have a couple of these universal constants. We have pi, we have the golden ratio, we have the Fibonacci series. Now those are the universal constants that come to my mind 
And I'm familiar with a couple of other constants that we speak of in science and mathematics. You know, we talk about Planck's constant. We talk about uh, the gravitational constant. We talk about uh, the speed of light as a constant. However, there's a distinction because those three constants and all of the others uh, in that particular category, they all require units of measurement. And now we have man-made constructs. So they are, uh, by that very nature, they're approximations of the universe. Uh, they provide insight, but they're not universal constants per se, like, uh, you know, the Fibonacci series, the uh, pi, or the golden ratio. Okay, so they're very special. Uh, they go back thousands of years. I mean, Fibonacci came up with his some eight or 900 years ago. Uh, you know, it took that, that long to get to that one. And I think they have something in common because you know, probably the first person who recognized pi, uh, you know, they made that uh, measurement. They divided the circumference of the circle by its diameter, and they came up with that 3.14. And then they tried it with another circle, and another circle, and another circle, and another circle, and it came out to be the same thing. And probably thought it was very interesting. Uh, probably showed it to, you know, friends or neighbors or whatever, and... Uh, they thought it was very interesting, uh, but by the next day, they'd all forgotten about it. It's just the nature of, uh, you know, humans. Now, uh, when it came to the golden ratio, probably something similar happened. When it came to, uh, you know, Fibonacci, when he showed his friends and neighbors, they all thought it was very interesting and clever. But uh, in reality, any school child could have come up with those constants. It's not about coming up with a constant. It's about recognizing what it is. And that is something... Well, I don't know. Can we imagine how, the impact that those constants have, have had upon human civilization? It's just... Um, it's beyond comprehension. And the reason for that is, is because it's the universe. And we haven't even begun to understand what the implications of, of them are or their applications. However, what we do is in the university, here at the University of the Universe, we just apply the code to, uh, to understand these universal constants. Because in reality, the universal law of numbers, it is the universal constant. It's not one of the universal constants. It's the universal constant. Just like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is a universal constant, so is pi, so is the golden ratio, so are the Fibonacci numbers, and so is the universal constant found in, uh, in the universal law of numbers, okay? So uh, I'm going to try and demonstrate that a little bit more for you today. So when we take uh, 2 pi, we get 6.28. If we add 6.28 upon 6.28 upon 6.28, then we're going to find this sequence. So 2 pi times 1, 2 pi times 2, 2 pi times 3, and on and on and on to infinity. And we're going to get the universal code. We're going to get 369. 369, 693, you know, uh, 639, however you want to look at it. But we're going to arrive at that by reducing the numbers. So why do I reduce the numbers? Once again, because the universe told me to. Why did the universe pick me to uh, reduce the numbers, to point this out? Uh, that's a mystery to me, too. But since it did, and I'm not aware of anybody else who's speaking about this, uh, I feel as though it's my obligation to share this with you. So that's why I do. Now, I just did it uh, in four, you know, I didn't go on to infinity. I don't want to engage myself in uh, endless arithmetic and futile endeavors. Basically, for me, when the universe tells me something, when I see this, 
And I just saw this this morning. You know, I was just playing with the numbers again. When the universe tells me this, I believe it. I don't question it. And I believe uh, wholeheartedly that this sequence will go on as such forever. Because once it starts, once the circle starts, it just goes around and around and around, repeating itself, and nothing will ever change. Okay, so now I'm going to come back to my universal constant, and uh, I'm going to point out a couple of things here for you. So what I wrote up here was, I'm just talking about trillions and trillions of zeros, okay? So if we take a decimal place and... Following that decimal, we place trillions and trillions and trillions of zeros, and then we write the one, or then we write the two, or the three, or the four, or the five, or the six, or the seven, or the eight, or the nine. It won't change this formula in the least. Now, in the scale of things, if we used a measuring uh, stick, for instance, if we spoke about it in terms of a meter, and we put a decimal place in front of the one, and followed that with trillions and trillions of uh, zeros, and we measured it in meters, it wouldn't take long before we got to something that was a, the size of a grain of sand. And it wouldn't take long after that before we arrived at something that was on the scale of an atom. But in the scale of this universe, that atom is huge. It's so huge you cannot comprehend it. Because if we threw another few trillion zeros on after the zeros that I'd already put there, then that atom would be incomprehensibly large. The same thing would happen if we took one of these uh, magic numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, and followed it by trillions of zeros, and then placed the decimal place, and using the meter as the measuring stick. Well, pretty soon we would come to some kind of an object that appeared so large we couldn't comprehend that one either. Yet, in the scale of this universe, that would be an infinitesimally small object. Because if we threw a few more trillion zeros on after that, it would appear to be minuscule compared to that object. And that wouldn't affect this formula at all either. Because this, it's the universal constant. Now, I don't own 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. I don't own the stars in the sky, okay? But I'm going to put my name down there right now for today. And um, unless somebody has laid claim to this constant, I want to associate my name with it. And I want uh, very much that 5,000 years from today, 10,000 years from today, 20,000 years from today, on whatever planet a human being uh, exists, that they refer to it as the Wittekind constant, okay? And I would be very honored uh, because the universe endowed me with that gift, and I accept it. Okay, so thank you for that. Now, uh, I'm going to try in my, I'm gonna give it my best effort, uh, with the small mind that I have to try and describe to you what is that, okay? So, it solves a mystery. That's one thing it is. It's the universal constant. It's the Garden of Eden. Before the serpent, before they took the bite out of the apple, it's the Holy Grail. It's the tunnel and it's the light. It's the closest thing that any human being can use to understand God, to understand the universe. It's the truth. Those are just some of the things 
that it represents. And it is really so incomprehensible, yet it is really so simple at the same time. And with that thought, I will be signing out. Paul Whittakind, coming to you once again from the University of the Universe. I wish you happiness. I wish you peace. And I wish you some benefit from learning the universal constant. Have a nice day. Bye.